So far, we looked at the working of peer-to-peer -peer protocols and we saw how BitTorrents help to distribute a file and the BitTorrent clients are able to download that file with efficiency. One of the key success attributes for the BitTorrents is the usage of distributed hash table. The distributed hash table is basically key value pair in which the key is a reference which is used to access the value. In this module, we quickly look at the basic operation of circular DHT. When we call it circular, it implies that the peers are arranged in a circle. We'd look at the redundancy provided for handling different kinds of failures. And we'd also look at an expression that gives us an estimate about the overall reliability cost. The operation of circular DHT can be best described by looking at first the circle. On the left hand side, here you see that PL3 sends out a request for key number 11. Here the arrangement is circular, so 3 is the immediate neighbor to 1 and to 4. Since key 11 is closer in integer value to 4, it is passed on to 4. Since we see here, that in this overall configuration, peer number 12 is closest in integer to the requested key. So 12 is going to respond with the content. It is also possible to provide direct connections, creating a kind of partial mesh between the peers, which is a modified form of circular DHT. If we were to look at the performance, of circular DHT with regards to managing failures, we must understand that redundancy should be provided because if the contents are present over multiple peers, the recovery is possible. If the content is only placed at one of the peers and that peer incidentally is not visible on the network, the content cannot be accessed and it is called a failure. This particular plot has been referenced from one of the papers cited later. Here you can see that it is a configuration of 1000 DHT nodes. The overall lookup process searching for the content comprises 5 runs and the key is replicated over 6 peers. So what is done in order to assess the redundancy and its effect on handling failures is to kill or disable a fraction of nodes and then determine how many lookups actually failed. It is a point to be noted that a lookup is considered a failure when all the replicas for that particular lookup are not available. On the graph you can see on the x-axis the number of failing nodes are increasing as the percentage or fraction of the total number of nodes and on the y-axis again it is the fraction of the failed lookups. As you can see in a distributed hash table configuration with redundancy it is not a linear trend. The expression for cost of reliability has been referenced jointly from these two papers. The first one is by Cox Russ a backup system built from a peer-to-peer -peer distributed hash table and the other one from Ratul Mahajan controlling the cost of reliability in peer-to-peer -peer overlays. The expression that shows the cost of reliability is here. The effect of the messaging to manage the keep alive messaging over the peers, between the peers and the cost of probing and getting the routing table entries is shown in here, which determine the overall cost. For example, if there are L leaf set keep alive messages sent every T seconds, this expression is the first one on the right hand side. Now, if two messages are sent for probing and response every RT seconds, then the expression 
on the right hand side starts to appear. The summation that you see here actually determines the expected number of routing table entries which is given by 128 divided by b. b is an integer which typically takes the value 4. So 128 by b determines the rows and 2 to the power b determines the columns. You can also observe that the last expression on the right hand side is a binomial distribution that lets us know about the presence or the absence of a content in a lookup.